All right there, everybody. George Soros is whining that President Donald Trump is completely dismantling the new world order. That is what we will be talking about on today's video. Before we do, of course, you just got a few more days left to get my latest book, The New Nationalism, How the Populist Right is Defeating Globalism and Awakening a New Political Order Free for a Limited Time as an ebook download on the link below. If you want to understand this amazing turn towards the nationalist populist right that we're seeing going on all over the world, this book was written for you. It's a quick read. It's my gift to you free for a limited time at the link below. And also, if you've not already done so, make sure to smack that bell and subscribe button. We're on our way to 100,000 subscribers. It's going to be a privilege to have you as a regular part of this channel. All right. So our good friend David Rocket posted over on the Turley Talkers Facebook group a report on an interview that George Soros had with the Washington Post where he's admitted that President Donald Trump is leading this massive worldwide backlash against globalization and its secular aristocracy. Again, speaking to the Washington uh, Post, which, uh, by the way, everyone needs to understand has really become officially nothing more than a propaganda shill for leftist cultural Marxism. Just glance. You don't even have to read carefully for like hidden messages, as it were. Just glance or skim through their editorial section, and you're going to see one left-wing propagandist after another after another they're just blindly repeating liberal democratic talking points and far left point of views as if they were just the air that such commentators were breathing. How anyone takes this newspaper seriously in terms of actual real journalism, I have no idea. I guess old globalist habits die hard. Nevertheless, it is being reported that Speaking exclusively to the Washington Post, Soros does in fact admit that Trump's rise to power has been the worst possible scenario for the secular leftist future envisioned by globalists around the world. ZeroHedge.com's reporting that from Soros' perspective, Trump is indeed destroying the world, but not in the apocalyptic sense like he's implying. He's actually, he isn't smashing globalist institutions like Godzilla rampaging through Tokyo, right, demolishing buildings and the like. I mean, of course, Trump is putting into an end to a lot of the trade arrangements that have been made over the last few decades, most recently replacing NAFTA with the USMCA and gutting the Paris Accords and scrapping TPP and the like. And, and again, of course, by the way, the head of the AFL-CIO, which is the top union organization in the nation, basically a union of unions, Richard Trumka, who's the head of it, uh, he came out hating on Trump rather than what he should be doing, which is kissing his feet at this point. Trump has done more for manufacturing and industrial unions in dismantling these globalist trade policies than all Democratic presidents in recent years combined. And instead, what does Trump, Trumpka, this uh, head of the AFL-CIO, what does he do? He comes out and he says to everybody, go out and vote for the Democrats. You see, folks, this is a great lesson for us, whether we're dealing with the national unions, whether we're dealing with the corporate globalist media, the universities, CEOs of multinational corporations. They have all been taken over by left-wing operatives. They're not interested in prospering you. They're not interested in the flourishing of our nation. They don't give a rip, not a rip about workers. They care only about power and their own place in that power. And they've been taught over the last several decades that such power and gain come from the party of globalization, and that is the liberal Democrats. But I digress. Uh, no, it's not so much the actual dismantling of globalist institutions that Soros is worried about when it comes to President Trump. It's a lot deeper than that, because if you think it through, those rifts can all be easily repaired by the next leftist globalist who comes to power. Instead, Soros is concerned that Trump is leading a real ideological rebellion, one that's offering a fundamentally different worldview than the globalist conception of life and therefore creating the philosophical foundations for a fundamentally new world than the one that the president has inherited. He sees Trump as representing nothing less than an existential threat to globalism and the globalist vision of life. Now, I think Soros is really on to something here. I think if you think about where we've come from, from the years of Obama, which we can forget ended not even two years ago, right? 
with Obama, who uh, the Zero Hedge Fund article, I think, rightly portrayed as a Soros surrogate, at least de facto. As a Soros surrogate, Obama worked towards building a world where the United States took the lead in bowing before the authority of the UN and the EU and the IMF and the World Trade Organization that basically sought to subsume all national sovereignty throughout the world to a de facto one world government. I mean, even university scholars have made this observation. Stepan Mastrovich over at Texas A&M has said that these transnational globalist superstructures, such as the UN and the EU and the IMF and the WTO, they basically function together as a single one world government. And of course, the United States took the lead in submitting to the agendas of these institutions, largely so that the United States could disproportionately influence and direct these institutions, which Soros would, of course, have no problem with whatsoever, right? He, he, may be, he may claim to be a globalist, but he wants a globalism that benefits him, right? And he could care less about you or me. And as part of this vision of a unified globalist order, this is key, Soros and the boys decided that they would attack any and all detractors from this vision as racist, sexist, bigoted, homophobic, nativist, far-right extremist, neo-Nazi, anti-Semitic, fascist. Did I leave any out? Uh, all we have to do is go back to the Washington Post and see what descriptive terms its editorial writers are using to get a sense of this, right? What Soros and the boys have done here, at least in cultural anthropological terms, is actually create their own taboo codes. It's actually very, very smart of them, and it shows how far thinking they really are. They really do want to usher in a new world, and if you're going to have a sustainable social order, you're going to have to have a kind of social immune system that identifies threats to that order and effectively neutralizes those threats. And that's what a taboo code is for. Taboo codes identify social threats. Uh, it's technically known as perturbations. They identify social threats on the one hand and then in turn initiate social mechanisms that neutralize those threats on the other. That's why all nationalists and populists and traditionalists are labeled with the terms that are indicative of social stigmas. It's a deliberate use of threat and intimidation to keep you and me compliant in this new world order. And then to everyone's shock, Donald Trump rises to prominence, saying things that are out and out threats to the functioning and perpetuating of the new world order of secular globalization, and the immune system kicked in. He's been called literally every name in the book. But there's just one problem. He doesn't care. He doesn't care. And in not caring, Trump taught the rest of the world not to be afraid or intimidated anymore by this globalist constructed taboo system, but instead just call it out for what it is. It's nothing more than the deliberate attempt to use fear and intimidation to control and manipulate us in accordance with the wishes of a secular globalist elite. That's all it is. The globalist taboo system of social stigmas is nothing more than an attempt by some to use fear and intimidation to control and manipulate us, to act in a manner of which they approve. We're dogs, right? We're trained animals, nothing more. And it has nothing whatsoever to do with civil rights. It has nothing whatsoever to do with women's rights for all the Kavanaugh rhetoric or LGBT rights, or anybody's rights. It has, nothing to, it has nothing to do with the environment. It has nothing to do with academic freedom or individual liberties or anything even remotely like that. It all has to do with manipulating you and controlling you out of fear and intimidation. And what Trump represents to the world is the symbol that we don't need to be afraid or intimidated anymore. In other words, what Soros is really concerned about is not that Trump is physically dismantling this or that aspect of globalism. He's certainly doing that. But the lasting impact of Trump is that he has, in effect, demolished the globalist taboo system. And in so doing, he's destroyed globalism's immune system. And without an immune system, there's no way the social order is able to survive. Destroy the immune system, and you have destroyed the social order. That is the real accomplishment of President Donald J. Trump. 
Remember, just a few more days to get my book, The New Nationalism, is a free download. And as always, please like, comment, and subscribe. Click on our Patreon link below. And become a monthly supporter of this channel and help us to continue to analyze current events in light of conservative trends so that you can personally and professionally flourish. God bless.